Hello again and welcome back. So last lesson, we learned about confidence intervals for the mean. And we're going to be talking about confidence intervals for the mean again today, but using small samples. So if you'll recall, a confidence interval is a range of values in which we are fairly sure the true value lies. And I taught you four steps to constructing a confidence interval for the mean. Now, in step three, we found the margin of error. And I introduced you to Z values for confidence intervals. And there was this asterisk as a part of it. If the population standard deviation is unknown, but N is greater than 30, then the sample standard deviation can be used. So the Z distribution allows us to make inferences about a population as long as we have samples of 30 or more. But we can't always get samples of 30 or more. So we have to use the T distribution for small samples. Quick history lesson here. There was this guy and his name was William Gossett and he worked at the Guinness factory in Northern Ireland. Now, part of the beer brewing process is growing barley, but he couldn't get samples like big enough to use the statistics that he had learned. So he developed, instead of the Z distribution, which we've been using, the T distribution. And he was like so excited about this new approach to small sample sizes that he asked his boss if he could publish his findings. Well, his boss didn't want anyone to know that this new approach was being used on their beer. Like he wanted to keep it a secret. So he told William Gossett that he could publish, but he couldn't use his real name. So William used the general name of student to publish his findings. So if you look in the back of a statistics book, you'll see this table of critical values for students T distributions. It's not because it's in the textbook that it's called students T distributions. It's because it's Gossett's pseudonym. Interesting, huh? So properties of the T distribution. The T distribution is bell shaped and symmetric about the mean, just like the Z distribution. The T distribution is a family of curves, each determined by a parameter called degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are equal to n minus 1. And we're not going to go really deep into that, but I do want you to be aware of it. The total area under the curve is 1, just like the z distribution. The mean, median, and mode of the t distribution are all equal to 0. And as the sample size gets bigger, the t distribution approaches or gets more and more and more and more like the z distribution. So let's do an example. You randomly select 16 coffee shops and measure the temperature of the coffee sold at each. The sample mean temperature is 162 degrees Fahrenheit with a sample standard deviation of 10. So we're going to find a 95% confidence interval for the mean temperature. We'll assume the temperatures are approximately normally distributed. So longhand calculations are not as straightforward as Z distribution intervals because of those pesky degrees of freedoms that we learned about on the other page. So we are going to jump straight to the calculator. Let's first find the 90% confidence interval for the mean temperature. So we know that N is 16, X bar is 162, sample standard deviation is 10. So on your TI 83 or 84, you're going to go to stat, tests, and scroll down to T interval. And under stats, you'll plug in what you know and hit a confidence level of 0.9 and then just hit enter. And there we have it, a confidence interval of 157.62 to 166.38. Now the 95% confidence interval, you do it the same way and you'd get 156.67 to 167.33. 
If you also want to find the 99% confidence interval, you can, and you'd get 154.63 to 169.37. Now, the reason we found all of them instead of just the 95% confidence interval is because I want you to compare them all and see if you can find a pattern. If you look closely, you'll see that the higher the confidence level, the wider the interval. Let's try another example. In her spare time, Mrs. Saunders runs a fabulous ice cream business with locations in both Monument and Colorado Springs. But some of her employees have been skipping work. She's getting mad. So she takes a sample of 10 employees during the last two week pay period to track how many days they've been absent. And below are her findings. Is it reasonable to conclude that the typical worker actually does not miss any days during a normal two week pay period? To answer that question, we're gonna use a confidence interval. First, we'll determine the mean and standard deviation of the sample. So that's really easy to do if you just put those numbers into the TI 83 or 84. You can find that the mean is 1.8 with a standard deviation of 1.13. Then develop a 95% confidence interval for the absenteeism of all her employees. Plug all that into your calculator, like I showed you before, we'll get a confidence interval of 0.988 up to 2.612. Now the question was, is it reasonable to conclude that the typical worker actually does not miss any days during a normal two week pay period? So the confidence interval is telling you what's reasonable. Are zero days reasonable? Zero is not in the interval, so zero is not reasonable the typical worker likely misses between one and two days per pay period. So I think it's reasonable that she's getting mad. The hardest part of statistics is often just knowing what test to use. So let's look at a flow chart to help you decide whether we are going to use Z or T. So first, is N, your sample size, greater than or equal to 30? If yes, use the Z distribution. If no, well, then you have another question to ask, and that is, is sigma known? Remember, sigma is the population standard deviation. If a sample size is less than 30, but we still know the population standard deviation, we can still use the Z distribution. So is sigma known? Yes, we're still in the Z distribution. Is sigma known? No. Now we're in the T distribution. So that's confidence intervals for the mean, small samples. I hope you enjoyed a bit of a history lesson with this one. Next lesson, we're gonna do confidence intervals one more time, but with proportions. Thanks for being here.